Okay, with Spirit Science 2 down, I decided to jump right into Spirit Science 3. Now, Spirit Science 2 was pretty bad, but let's face it, it was nowhere near as atrocious as number 1. So, let's get right into this. How bad can it be? It can only go up from here, right? What the bloody hell am I supposed to say about that? Uh, I mean, it's pretty much just rambling in forever about absolutely nothing. I suppose I can make a few comments about that bit at the beginning where he's talking to the animals, but... Oh, good. Gravy. I had to skip the beer and go straight to the whiskey. Glenn Levitt, 15 year old. Ugh, good stuff. Anyway, there's no opening quote on this one, so screw it. I'm making my own. Ridicule is the only weapon which can be used against unintelligible propositions. That's pretty much what I'm going to have to resort to for this video. There's nothing there for me to work with. Ay. There are two primary ways of communicating with beings of higher consciousness. One is through astral projection, where you leave your physical body and communicate to them in person. You see, how am I supposed to comment on astral frickin' projection? As much as I'd love to break into astral travel right now, we have to save that for later. Yippee, I guess. What was the point of bringing that up if you're not going to talk about it? The other method involves having a being come to Earth and communicate through a trained person, and this is called channeling. Wait. Go, go, let, let's go back to the previous video for a little bit. No, 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 let's not go back to the previous video. Never mind. It, wasn't this supposed to be about super psychics and indigo children? What happened to that? Channeling is a natural form of communication between humans and beings of higher consciousness. And that summarizes most of the video right there. Channeling. I guess prayer is completely obsolete, or is prayer a form of channeling? Okay, I'm going to summarize a lot of this video for you. Channeling is essentially going through the thought realm that the established in video one using your third eye, which is the sixth chakra that was discussed in video two, to talk to animals, other people, or higher energy beings. There. I saved you watching the entire 13 minute plus of that video. Well, I, I can't leave it at that, though. There's so much freaking stupid in this video that I can't leave it at that. So I'm going to skip a whole bunch of this and just pick out what I can and then mock the ever-loving hell out of it. A human will turn him or herself into kind of like a phone for beings of higher consciousness and people to communicate. I'm a spirit! A channeler can choose who or what they want to channel. As long as the other party has an interest in communicating, the link is made and the channeling can begin. Natalie Portman, please pick up on my channel. Contrary to popular belief, entities do not generally use human languages because it is considered awkward and clumsy. And all this time I thought people participating in glossolalia were just participating in some kind of group conformity. Oh wait, they are. The majority of this message is conveyed through an elegant series of sensory feelings. This sounds familiar. Didn't I address this in the first video? 
It's empathy. 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 Oh, yeah. Let's talk about animal communication, because this is a form of channeling that you yourself can do. Start by taking your dog into a quiet room. I'm not sure I like the direction this video is going. Sit on the floor next to him, or if he's allowed on the couch or bed, have him sit next to you. Are you sure you want to go there? Pet him in his favorite spot until he's settled in. Then, start talking quietly to him in a loving tone. In all seriousness, though, how the heck does this prove anything other than your dog likes to have its head or special place rubbed? It likes attention, in other words, and if you give it the attention it wants, it will put its head down on your lap, which is a known pack behavior of dogs and sometimes in cats. Your spirit science doesn't fit into this behavior whatsoever. If you have smaller animals like avians and reptiles, you have to remember that the animal has a smaller brain. Their reception of pictures is apt to be slower and take longer. Why are you assuming that an animal's brain size is directly proportional to its ability to process images? And by images, I'm assuming you mean the ones that are transferred over your so-called thought realm. Let's just assume for sake of argument that your thought realm actually exists. Compare this to real biology. An owl, for instance, has a brain that is well developed to see. It processes images extremely well. Same thing with even insects. Uh, sharks have very keen senses of smell. Most of their brain is therefore wired for smell. So is it at least not feasible that an animal with even just a small brain, one that is actually tied into this thought realm despite being very small? Why did I even give that consideration? One big question that everyone has around now, well, do they talk back? Yeah, they do. I communicate with my cat, Toonie, and he always tells me what he wants, whether it's food, water, or to go outside. Let's leave aside the fact that you're using the argument for personal experience for now. It's not exactly hard to tell what a cat or a dog wants. It goes over to the door. I bet you it wants out. It comes up to you and starts begging you to do something. It also probably wants out. It goes over and sits by its food dish. It's probably hungry. Uh. Why exactly do you need your thought realm to figure this out? I've actually read that horses are really good at communication as well. The Horse Whisperer. The truth is, I help horses with people problems. I bet you some people actually think that movie is real too. I know what you're probably thinking. I bet you don't. Don't I have to be psychic to do this? Well, yes, but everyone is psychic, but most people don't really realize it. Considering that everything you've mentioned so far either doesn't require any psychic action, or is completely unverifiable like the horse and apple story I cut out, again, personal experience stories are meaningless in actual science, you don't really need to be psychic to know any of this. There's a gland in the brain called the pineal gland, which scientists have actually labeled the psychic gland. No, scientists do not call it the psychic gland. At worst, it's sometimes referred to as the third eye because in, and let me stress this, non-mammalian vertebrates, we are mammalian vertebrates, and ergo this does not apply to us, some of its cells have resemblance to some eye cells, suggesting that there might be a possible evolutionary link between the two, like maybe the pineal gland developed from leftover eye tissue. Its function appears to be maintaining re or regulating sleep patterns, as it produces melatonin, but also appears to have some relation to sexual development, as damaged pineal glands can lead to early onset puberty. Which makes me wonder, is the orange sex chakra from your last video actually in the right place on your graph. Just remember to release the concept that you'll hear words and allow yourself to feel into your animal friend. I do a spit take now, but this is really good whiskey. All I can say is that that sex music I played from earlier, 
sounding really appropriate right now. So now we understand how to channel beings of lower consciousness, animals. I always hate hearing phrases that separate us from animals like this. We are animals in every sense of the word. For beings of higher consciousness, it's essentially the same thing, only reversed. In this scenario, we are like the animal. Okay, people. It's from here on out that the video gets really, really into the woo. It contains a couple of clips from videos of people spouting dialogue that sounds almost, but not quite, entirely unlike real science. That is, they sound like a poor version of Deepak Chopra. And no, that's not a compliment. There's a whole lot that's going to be cut out from here. I didn't cut as much as I thought I would from the previous segments, but from here on, cut city. If you actually dare watch the rest of the video uncut, Link will be below. I don't advise it, though, unless you've got a lot of this lying around. In the meantime, stay tuned for silliness. There are a plethora of channelings on the web that you can find. Yeah, there are lots of channels out there. Too bad about YouTube's new channel layout, though. Did I mention that I hate the new channel layout before now? Yeah, I hate the new channel layout. If what is being said feels right, then go with that flow. If it does not, then you don't have to subject yourself to it. The final decision will have to come from you, though. So, let me get this straight. Your criteria for determining if something these higher beings say is true or not, since some of the higher energy beings might be deceptive, is to essentially trust your own feelings on the matter. Let your own personal biases determine your position, in other words. If your channel has the word science in its name... Sometimes channelings are quite boring. Well, I'll give you this. Your videos aren't boring. Someone might be forgiven a moment of confusion, though. Boredom-induced sleep is often confused with comas from a massive onslaught of stupidity. As the channeler will just lay down and connect internally and just let the information fly. Insert your own masturbation joke here. Other times, the connection between the beings is stronger, and they'll walk around the room and talk and be quite lively. Wait. Didn't you say earlier that these higher energy beings didn't talk to you in language? If someone is channeling, how are they able to talk? Are they some kind of universal translator for these beings? Did Star Trek have it at least partially right? Oh yeah, yeah. Then there's people like this. Fuck me. Here we go. As has been often said, you are shifting. But you are always shifting. You are shifting now. You don't have to wait to shift. You've been shifting. You've been shifting all your lives. The only way to create the illusion of movement is to actually shift. So you're shifting now. 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 Apparently, that segment, the cut out a lot of it, is only about a minute long. But it feels so much longer because he's just talking about shifting and shifting and shifting. And of course, what's going through my mind the entire time is this. Please note, that was filmed when I was not drinking. Now I gotta admit, that's actually pretty cool. Pretty... Pretty cool? No, 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 no. You wanna know what's pretty cool? This. That was some moron babbling on for about a minute about shifting. <sighs> no. What's actually cool is looking at what the real world actually offers. Why do you and people like you insist on exploring something that isn't there? 
And regardless of the excitement in the way he channels, the information is usually really good. He was babbling for a minute about, y you know what, forget it. If you connect with a being that just fills you up with love and light inside, then feel free to establish a conscious connection and communicate with this being. Because unlike a human being, a higher energy being would of course never think to fill you up with positive energy or positive thoughts or positive feelings, while all the while manipulating you for their own nefarious ends. No. That would never... ever ever happen. Syrians and Pleiadians especially are known for being very loving and helpful. What? Syrians come from Sirius, the brightest star in the sky. The Pleiadians come from the Pleiades, which is a cluster of stars through the constellation of Taurus. Yes, I know what Sirius and the Pleiades are. I still have no idea what you're talking about. To learn more about this, I recommend reading the book Bringers of the Dawn, or listening to the audiobook, which is available on YouTube. And I recommend checking out other sites that debunk that nonsense, because I honestly don't have the time, patience, or liver to make my way through that nonsense myself. However, you said a lot of stuff in the Spirit Science videos is from that book, or from channeling, or from other talks by this guy. A man named Drunvalo Melchizedek was visited by a being named Thoth. Yeah. The rest of the video, he's really just going on about that guy and Thoth, who's his spirit guy he talks to, and emerald tablets, and how that guy has a different name in the thought realm and an interview, and some other guy making stupid circle drawings and uh, talk about the Crimson Circle, it's... Oh. I can't form sentences right now to describe this. I, I, I can't. I'll just finish the video here and give this clip to summarize the content of the rest of the video. Peace and stay shiny, everyone. And see what's in the box! Nothing! Absolutely nothing! Stupid! You're so stupid!